Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the first of a series of uh, webinars for growers from Innovate Ag. We're really glad that you could be here today. Uh, looks like we've got people from all over the world. Um, like, let me go ahead and get my screen shared. So my name is Steve Mantle. And uh, I'm founder and CEO of, of Innovate Ag, uh, based out of Walla Walla, Washington. And uh, today I'm going to be joined with um, uh, Todd and Jeff Tucker of uh, Agrinet, also based out of lovely Walla Walla, Washington, and, uh, and Lance Kirkham um, as, a, as a grower here on this side of the state as well. Our focus today is talking about auto water from Agrinet. And uh, Todd uh, Tucker, who I'll introduce here in a moment, will um, will get into that. That will be the bulk of uh, of the focus today around irrigation. Um, wanted to give you just a, a quick background on Innovate Ag um, as we get started, and then we'll switch gears into um, after Jeff and, and Todd and Lance talk through things. I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, and share a little bit about the Smart Orchard project that we've been doing with Washington Tree Fruit Research Commission, Washington State University, and a handful of other partners. Um, what Innovate Ag is about, we're an ag tech startup um, that is focused on pulling data from many different sources. And what we found in talking to growers is that there are lots of different silos of data from sensors, from equipment, for weather, for imagery, whether that be satellite imagery or drone imagery, market pricing, um, all that type of thing. And so we bring all of these different pieces together so that a grower can make more informed decisions and empower their crews to do so on things like equipment positioning, um, and utilization, pest management, cam orders, um, and irrigation. And um, so that's really our focus today is to, to delve right in on the irrigation side. So with that said, I will hand over to Todd Tucker to take off with the rest of the webinar. Todd. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about auto water, which is automated irrigation, closed loop irrigation. Um, basically it uses, I wanna share my screen here. Basically, it uses soil moisture data from a particular depth to determine if and when irrigation turns on uh, or if a set should occur. And you can see in this very simple drawing here, um, basically what's going on is we've got a, a depth chosen here on the moisture probe. That data is coming into the auto water algorithm and then it's kicking out a decision whether to irrigate or not. And so, Today I'm going to cover soil moisture monitoring in general um, on our system, um, the, the Agrinet app in general and navigation through it as it pertains to um, soil moisture monitoring and auto water. And then I'm going to get specific about auto water at the end. Um, and, but first of all, before I do that, I'd like to bring on uh, Lance Kirkham, vineyard owner and crop advisor who ran auto water this year on uh, six blocks of his vineyard. Um, and he can maybe tell you a little bit about what that experience was like. And I'll, Lance, I'll ask you a couple questions if you just want to make a statement about uh, how did auto water go for you this year? Hi, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for having me on here. Uh, just want to give you a little background. Uh, I got about 25 acres of concord grapes, 17 acres of those are established, and eight acres. Hey Lance, we're we're not quite hearing you really loud, but just a little closer to the mic. Sorry. All right, no problem. How's Perfect. that? Is that a little better? Awesome. All right, great. So, give you a little bit of background on my vineyard. Uh, it's in Sunnyside, Washington, about 25 acres. 17 of that is established, and eight acres is second year. All of that is under drip irrigation. Uh, before I was working with auto water, I was running everything off uh, Eritrol controllers, so just nine volt controllers and schedulers. Um, after switching over to auto water, I was very pleasantly surprised. 
surprised how quick we could get the irrigation under control and how fast the soil profile responded. We were able to do less water more frequently. I really like that. I found the system to be very reliable, kind of like a set it and just kind of pay attention using the app. I found uh, I was watching that probably every morning going on there and watching that app and kind of taking a look at the uh, soil probes and verifying everything was working correctly. And uh, I don't think I touched my irrigation system for almost two and a half months. It just <laughs> ran constantly. So I was very happy with that. Um, yeah. I think there's some cool things in the future with it, so very happy. Well, great, Lance. I had I had some questions for you, but you basically answered them all. So Wait. I guess I'll skip those. And I didn't give you any questions in advance, but uh, I appreciate your statement there, and um, that's exciting. I'm I'm glad that uh, glad that you're able to uh, you know endorse us like that. That's great. Okay, I'm gonna move move ahead here uh, with soil moisture monitoring, which is the core of Auto Water. I'm gonna jump right in. You can see I'm in a graph here. This is one of Lance's blocks. This is the whole season that we're looking at at once here. And um, I'm gonna start by talking about how we, how we start the system up, how we uh, start to make the settings um, as we'd like to see. So. First of all, we run a couple of irrigations that would the irrigator would normally run. And you can see out here, these three are, are sort of the test irrigations. I'm gonna zoom in on this guy right here. And what we're looking at is, these are the different soil moisture values at the different depths. We don't ever allow the lines to cross each other um, because we think it's more intuitive to, to view them um, vertically. And so, it, the, the idea here is to use percolation, understanding the timing of percolation to adjust your irrigation so that you're getting water down to the root zone or wherever your target is um, without going past that and without flushing all the oxygen out of, your, uh, out of your soil and not pushing nutrients past the root zone. So this first irrigation here is a pretty good example. This is a, oh, let's see here. This is a five hour set. And we can see that we got water all the way down to 20 inches. And we didn't really affect the 24 inch depth. It's pretty flat. So basically it's just kind of watering up all the way down to 20 inches. Um, and it, it's a pretty good irrigation there. So I actually used this as a starting point when we made the settings. Go back to show all here. And we turned auto water on, I think about right here. And there was some tweaking going on. As you see, if you look at the, the depths, the 20 inch and 16 inch, which are the two blue there, you'll see they start to go down and that's tweaking auto water down. We, I was trying to, trying to lower it and, and lower the target as much as I could until we got to a point um, where it would level out and we'd wanna stick with that. And so we, we kept doing that and, and Lance would go out every once in a while and take soil samples and take a look at what the soil felt like and looked like and until we kind of dial it in. And so then we dial it in here uh, late June. And as you can see, things are sort of flattening out. Um, we were sticking with the five hour set and we ended up changing to a two, a two hour set. And you can, I'm gonna turn off these comments here so you can see that better. And the two hour set, you can see it's more of a pulse there in early August. In September, it's uh, coming on more often, uh, but for a shorter set, and that seemed to work best. To see how everything's very, very flat there as far as they're coming up and down with each irrigation, but not not really adding or subtracting. So we're maintaining an even soil moisture there. Um, and uh, so it, here in the app, you you can see I did a zoom in, so you just you can easily zoom in anywhere and highlight and check things that way. Zoom out, you can change the number of days you're looking at here. I can punch in 28 days and hit update. And you'll see uh, now we're just looking at uh, just the last 28 days. Obviously not much is going on in the winter here. Um, let's go out to, I'll show you one more interesting thing while we're here. So one unexpected advantage 
that we noticed this year was, oh, I'm gonna have to go a little further than that. Let's see. Was uh, when we got that in early September, um, we got that dense smoke layer that came from all the fires on the West Coast. And uh, okay, so they're marked right here. So I'm gonna zoom into area of before and during that smoke event. And I want you to see, obviously these spikes at four inch, those tell you when the uh, sets occurred. And these are two hour sets now we're looking at. And you can see we've got, you know, five, 10 irrigation events in just a few days there. And then you see right here, on the eighth, when that dense smoke came in, we slowed down to just three three irrigations there, and then down to two, and then down to three, and it it the system automatically just adjusted itself because um, the plants were slowing down, and we obviously don't have as much evapotranspiration occurring, and you can see the uh, twenty and sixteen inch steps really kind of flattening out. So that was something we didn't plan for, but it's a it's a good uh, example of how auto water really does a nice job of adjusting um, to whatever environmental uh, challenges are, are in, you know, occurring. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you a couple other features we have here. So this, in the app, we've got soil data. So we can pull up, this is based on the GPS location of the sensor unit. And so we can pull up good information uh, on what kind of soils there, on the different uh, layers and what kind of holding capacity they have. I can go into this. There's a lot of stuff I could go into more detail here, but I'm, I'm not going to do it. There's, we, we don't have time for all that, but there's a lot here and all these things are explained. If you just click on them, they give you a description. Um, another thing, another option we have here is to, just to look at the available data set. And this is just showing us when the probe was operating, the green and then the red when it wasn't. So you can see last year, we put this probe in in the middle of August, ran it to harvest, pulled it for the winter and put it back in in April. And you can see it was working very consistently the whole time there. Shut those off. So we use these percolation depth, uh, the percolation to determine the length and frequency of the irrigation, and then we ground truth it. Um, like Lance was doing, getting, you know, getting some soil samples and comparing the numbers that we're seeing there. And um, uh, we've also got this comment situation here where we can put comments in anytime we see something in the field observations, they can be categorized. So if I add one, you can choose now or place it anywhere. So I place it on the graph and then I've got the type. There's all these different kinds of comments you can make, or you can just leave the category uh, empty. And if you don't, if you need a category that's not here, it's easy to add those two. And at the end of the year, you can collect those by type or by date and, and sort of look through them that way. So they give you a, a good method of record keeping. And this all can be done on your phone, on your tablet, um, iPhones, Androids. Uh, here's an example of what, what the app looks like. You pull it up on on an Android or an iPhone. Um, and uh, so also you can, there's another option here, you can export data. So if you wanted to pull this data into a spreadsheet. Now we're just talking about soil moisture monitoring here. And that's basically the system we have here. Um, I'm gonna get more into the app and more into the auto water aspects, but I just wanted to start there. And are there any questions sort of on the idea of how we might use this Soil moisture monitoring to um, start to schedule irrigations or anything that I didn't explain very well. Jeff's asking to look at the compare mode a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. So there's, thanks, Jeff. There's a tool here called compare mode um, that we can use. If we, I'm gonna shorten this up a little bit actually. Go down to 55 days. If we, and I'm gonna turn off comments so they're not, we don't have, we can toggle those so you don't have to see them if you're looking more at the graph. If I hit the compare mode, I can take an irrigation and highlight a length of time 
And then what I'm going to do is try to go until I see the last effect. Looks like uh, the green depth there is about, that's about as much water as it's going to get on an irrigation. So I'm going to release. And what this tells me is the deltas or the, the amounts of change at each depth and how long that took. So in 16 hours, I got 5.5% uh, increase on, on the four inch. Well, it's actually increased because it's already flattening out. But for example, on, on the, um, on the 12 inch depth, I got uh, an increase of 2.4% in 16 hours. So it took basically 16 hours for it to penetrate down to the 12 inch until it didn't add any more water at that depth after that. And that's a two hour set. So you can see, obviously we all know it takes a while for the, the irrigation to get all the way through the profile. Um, any, more, really any more questions on sort of the soil moisture monitoring aspect here? Yeah, Jenny with WSU, welcome Jenny, has a question on um, the soil data that's shown on the left side of the graph where the data is coming from. Yeah, that, so we're, we're getting that feed from the geological survey. That's the, that's the oh, I pushed, oops, I pushed the wrong button there. <laughs> we're getting this from the geological survey that was done uh, in the 60s and 70s. It, it's a straight pull from government sources and it's based on the lat long. Uh, all these probes have a lat long associated with them. You'll see more of that when I pull out to the general app that this is all map based. I wanted to start with soil moisture monitoring since it is the core of auto water, but uh, it is kind of a quick dive in. Okay, with that said, I'm going to move on to basically the app and and what it what how it works and and what we do with it. So I'm already deep into it right now, so I'm going to basically just back all the way out. And if I was to log in the app, I would get I would come in right here. And you see, you've got these choices. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this because there's just too much here to cover in this meeting, but we're gonna do more of these later and, and delve into each one of these items. But we'll start with just the map. So as we go to the map, it opens up the grower site and it shows a marker for each sensor unit that's in the field here. And pull out just a little bit. This is zoom in and zoom out. I can turn on the borders. Um, and this is a layer based methodology. So you see here on the left, we have valves, temperature, moisture, uh, flow meter. We can turn these on and off if we're not interested in seeing them at the moment. So, for example, I'm going to turn the valves off right now. So they're not, if we're just interested in something else, maybe we don't want to have all that clutter. So um, and then I can turn things on and off that way. So this is also where third-party sensor data can come in and be a layer on this map or imagery or all sorts of things. Um, that's, we've built our app to be able to accept third-party data and display it. <clears throat> um, in, in the situation of our equipment here, we're using markers that are giving you um, a short-term a short -term look at what's going on right now. Um, with some budget lines in there. You'll see that uh, these with, with the blue, green, and red, these are moisture probes. And they're, you know, it's boring because it's winter, so they're all just flat. These, these are summed graphs, so all of the depths are summed and put into one line. It's just so you can get a quick feel, like take a quick look, see is everything in the green okay, you can move on. If you see something in the red or in the blue, and you may want to, or spiking out, you may want to uh, take a look. Um, these valve markers, the V's here, um, these are showing, and I, I did a, this is actually not running, but I, I wanted to have some something to show you here. So I turned the system on without letting the pump turn on. And what we're seeing here is these pie-shaped blue areas are, that's when an irrigation occurred. So, and this is, imagine this is a clock face, and here's the time. And then if they're light, if they're dark blue like this, that means they've already occurred. If they're occurring, they'll be light blue. So you can kind of tell quickly which valve's on right now. And then you've got your flow meter here, which is important um, to know everything's all right. And then you've got a pressure sensor here uh, on the line um, that will tell you, you know, obviously we need flow information and pressure information to make sure that the 
the auto water's running right. Those are important. Um, so uh, that's the layer philosophy that we have here. Um, also, we're showing the health of these sensor units or not, maybe not the health, but the freshness of data is a better way to put it. So if you see these green, you see these green frames, they mean all is good. We're getting data and it's recent data and you can, you can, you can bet on it. Uh, if this frame turns yellow, then you know that something's going on. We haven't gotten data recently, so you shouldn't necessarily make decisions based on what you're seeing there. This one here was pulled from the field and you can see we've got a skull and crossbones. So we're not even, we're, we're telling you there's nothing, no decision making here, obviously. It's, it's, not, it's not running. Also, as you see, when I hover, you've got the voltage of the unit. These are all solar powered with, with batteries. So it's a quick way to see what's going on. Um, and that helps you understand, you know, keep things up. Um, we, we don't have big issues with batteries failing during the season. It's, we've got enough sunlight and even our systems even make it through the winter. So uh, we're in good shape on that for the most part. Once in a while you get a bad battery or something. Um, so that can happen. So these markers are here, but if you click on them, it takes you back to where we started, the more in-depth view of the data. And so I didn't talk about this because it doesn't really apply to auto water, but here's, here's the sum graph where we sum all the depths. We can also show um, soil temperature graph here. We've got soil temperatures here. Or we can show a battery graph if we're concern, concerned that something's not uh, it's not charging, discharging. I mean, this looks perfect. You see a charge, discharge every day, boom, boom, boom. But if you if you saw this start to trail off, you would know we're, we're headed for trouble with the battery, for example, and all the other things I described in there. So each marker, I'm not gonna go through all the marker types because there's a lot there, but I'll, we'll just look at one other one real quick. So here's the temperature sensor. It's the same sort of thing. You've got a graph that'll pull up here soon. It's got temperature. Uh, relative humidity and dew point um, so that and also here you can see you can set you can set alarms right now there's alarm set for 33 degrees or 90 degrees so that you'll get um, you'll get alarm you'll get an SMS alarm if we reach those thresholds and that can be done with anything you've done with a moisture probe or anything you can set alarm so you see it's a similar situation here as we were looking at with moisture probe and that's basically how all of our devices work uh, if you went into a valve, it would be to schedule it. Um, so as we pull that up, you can see, you could, you could create a schedule here manually. If you have auto water, you don't really need this, but this is a way to, to schedule. So that's basically an overview of how our app works in, in very general terms. Um, does anyone have any questions about the app or anything I've showed in, in, the last, in this last little section here? All right, we'll move. Good. What's that? All's quiet. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, well, let's move on to the exciting part to me, which is the auto water. And uh, we'll get more specific about that now. Um, so I'm going to show you first if we go back to our graph page, and I'm going to turn off the soil temp and the battery. We don't need that anymore. Um, for folks who don't have, who only have moisture probes, say, they can still use auto water. Auto water is, I should explain a little more, you need hardware to run auto water autonomously. And that is, those are remote valve control units. And if you, if you don't have a, a continuous water supply, then it's also turns a pump on and off with the valves. So those are pieces of hardware that you would have to install to run the system. However, if you don't have those and you only have moisture probes, then we can still run them through the algorithm and give you the feedback. So if I click on the auto water button here, it says this is a, we've taken three, we've taken the last three hours average soil moisture on the sensor six, which is the, the sixth sensor, which is a 24 inch. And it says that average is 36.85. So if we took the last three hours in here, it averages out to that. So 
our irrigation set point is at 38%. And the reason it was is because you can see here, this is, this is Lance's winter water up, re refilling the profile for the winter after harvest. And so we cranked it up to 38 on the, on the 24 inch depth so we could make sure we got water all the way down. And so it's, it's trailed off a little bit since then. It really doesn't need water right now, but that's an example of, of what your uh, result would be. And then your, your uh, irrigation for 170 minutes, that's what preset, and then your drainage time. And now I'm gonna show you how you would actually set this up. So if we go to edit parameters, we're in that same block and you can quickly turn, you can quickly turn this system off without affecting any of the other settings by disabling it so that it won't run automatically. If you wanted to switch to manual, you have a problem in the field, you don't want pumps and valves uh, transitioning, you just disable it right there and you, and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, priority is if, say you had lettuce and alfalfa, you probably wanna prior prioritize your lettuce over your alf alfalfa field so that when they come in order, um, you know, this one will be prioritized. In this case, they're all the same crop, it doesn't really matter. Here's our irrigation set point. So we're, we've got six sensors in this particular circumstance. Uh, we got a four inch probe uh, all the way down to two feet. And so they're, and they're four inches apart. So wherever we think we wanna irrigate to, based on looking at the graphs and watching the first few irrigations, we can set that depth right here. And then our moisture set point. So this is the percent that we're targeting. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and lower that back down so we can see what it looks like if it did need the water. And the duration, so this is how long the set will run in minutes. Average hours, so how long, like I said before, how long are we going to, how big of an average time are we gonna look at to get that target number? And then a start delay, if you wanted it, if you wanted to set a delay in there when it starts, you could do that there. And then the water drain time, which is important because um, the, the amount of time you put there locks the system out from irrigating again. Obviously we saw as we were looking at those moisture graphs that it takes time for that water to get down in the profile to the depths. And if we try to, we try to average it out again too soon, it won't even have moved and so it'll, it'll pour the water on. So we need that drain time as a lockout feature um, to, to make space for, for um, the whole percolation to occur. So let's save that up with our new set point. And then we'll go back and we'll clear out our water and run it again. And now we don't need irrigation because we're below the set point. Um, so that's, that's how you set this up. Very simple. This can be done again on your phone, your tablet, whatever. You can make these changes um, as you see fit. What Lance and I found, uh, you know, at Tuctronics, at Agronet, we've been, we've been doing this for four years uh, in different situations. This is, Lance was the first commercial application out there. And what we found was at that original tweaking point, we probably could have done it a little quicker but once we got things set up, we didn't have to change them much. Now, if you're going to do something like deficit irrigation or, or try, to, try to give some stress to your crop to create more sugars, for example, in apples or a vineyard, then you might be tweaking it you know, for those seasons or that plant stage. Um, but other than that, it, it's, it's pretty much once you get this down, you're not really gonna be changing set, settings very much. Uh, so I'm going to back up here and uh, show you one more thing, and we'll be, I'll be done with my spiel, and that is resource mitigation. So just going to talk a little more about this and the future of it, but this is a nice quick look at all your blocks and um, what's going on. They're, they're automatically ordered. These are the irrigation orders that are going to come next. So you can see the first one is 1.3 low. So that, that's the most needy field we have right now. So that's why it's number one. Number two is 1.1 low. And what we're seeing here is again, our target moisture percentage and the actual, and that's calculated from the, whatever the average time is set. And so that's why this one is the preferential irrigation. This will be next on the list. And then block two would be follow it. And uh, we can see the same thing here. 
Now, if you, the reason we have resource mitigation is maybe you look at this and you go, I want, I need to get more water to a different field for whatever reason. You can simply go in here and click the up arrow and see we've moved block two into priority. And now block five will be second. And if we want to, we can move them one at a time like I just did, or we can clear them all the way to the top. So if I want block four now, I click the all the way up and it goes all the way to the top. So, and, and these will reset after the irrigations are done. They'll reorder whoever needs the most next again. And then this is, a, this, this is kind of a morning check thing. You can take a look at this in the morning and say, okay, I like this or no, we need to tweak this a little bit because of circumstances that may be beyond the scope of soil moisture. So that's, that wraps, oh, also, okay, let me go through the rest of this. So also you see here, start and end times, and you can, you, you've got a, a situation where you can turn stuff off quickly or on manually right here. You can enable and disable. This is the same button that we would be changing when we were at the valve page there. This would just disable or enable. Um, and then you, you still get to see the ones that are disabled and all their stats, but you know, you don't get, um, they're not in the active list. So that's our resource mitigation feature. Uh, we think that's important and, and there's actually a brighter future in that as far as, and Jeff will talk a little bit about that, uh, some more to come on that. But this, everything I'm showing you here today was as in existence, it's working. Um, in some cases, this has been working for three years uh, in our research and in corn and in lemon. And uh, we worked basically a year and a half with Lance uh, on the vineyard there and uh, it's come off without a hitch so far and it's the system has worked well. Um, are there any questions about auto water specifics? So you're saying again that that all of this, including even the resource mitigation piece, it's available. I can do this on the go on an Android or iOS phone or tablet too. That That's now. right. It's all cross platform. Uh, some features work better or, or easier to use on a PC simply yeah. because you have the 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 the, the property or the uh, amount of space to look at. But yes, it all is, and all the settings pages are great for phone. They're, they're, they're big enough, you can see everything and it's no problem to um, go and make those changes without having to squint or zoom. And, and so uh, we think you can operate the system from a phone really. That's great. So sometimes you may need to take a deeper look at a graph on a, on a PC, but other than that, um, you know, you can do this stuff on a phone. Yeah, awesome. And so Lance was hands off from May on basically, is that right? Lance, did, Lance didn't have to do a lot this year. <laughs> that's, a, that's a grower's dream. Well, I mean, you know, I was watching it closely, of course, for quite a while, but there was a point when I even backed off and, and just didn't worry about it because we had the alarm system and everything and, and it, it, we never had a problem. So it worked well. And, and, you know, we didn't expect a lot of problems. We've been doing telemetry and agriculture for over 20 years. So this it's it's a new system but the communication is all stuff we've been doing for a long long time and uh, Jeff's an excellent engineer and in fact uh, with that I will pass it over to Jeff Jeff Tucker is is uh, owner of Tucktronics Agrinet and my brother and an, a, a fantastic electrical engineer and and knows a lot about agriculture we grew up in an ag family and he um, also has been doing this for a long time basically telemetry and data control and monitoring systems in agriculture. So Jeff, you want to talk about some fun things that maybe are around the corner? Sure. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate that. Um, really, what I wanted to talk about is uh, what we're going to be doing into the future um, and also um, some refinements of what we're doing now. So the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, uh, a little bit more detail on the mitigation system. And Todd, if you could pull up that slide. Oops, I pulled up the wrong one. Not that one. <laughs> Sorry. Just a second here. The actual version of it. So really, what my whole goal was initially when I started this company was to, to give growers the ability to um, see their moisture. Uh, it was really all about the Centec technology that had 
come onto the market. And what I realized is people were not really instructed on what to do with this data. They were in many ways just given the data and were asked to sort it out. So that's what we've made our mission is make sense of this data and uh, present it in a way it can be acted on. And now in, in this uh, modern age, we're actually taking that data and putting it back into an irrigation prescription. So this graphic that we've got up here is basically that. This is the heart of the um, arrangement by priority of your particular moisture graphs. For example, you've got B and T and J, A, S, P, those are the field names. But as you can see, they're resorting themselves according to their proximity to wilt. And the other thing that I want to point out on this graphic is um, the ability to utilize your pumping capabilities to the maximum. For example, A and J came on together because they uh, are below the maximum rate the pump can deliver. We could not turn P on because there was not enough uh, capacity in the pump. As soon as J turned off, then P could come on. And then as soon as A went off, B can come on, and et cetera, and et cetera, down on line. So this is how you can take a very complicated uh, needs requirement, because again, we're doing pulsing on these auto water prescriptions. We're trying to do a partial irrigation so that auto water can drain, come back, examine, and irrigate again in more of a pulse fashion, as opposed to just one big bucket full uh, that would spike a lower level. So this is really um, the heart of that. And I just wanted to make it clear that um, what we're doing in the future is going to be uh, to maximize this technology so that it can handle uh, any irrigation system out there, multiple pumps, uh, booster pumps, uh, and uh, flow meter feedback. So really, um, the future of this is just more feedback, more refinement in how we evaluate whether it's running or not. We have a concept called uh, signature analysis. And what that is, is just basically creating a norm, creating a normal expectation of, for example, how your pump pressures up. And we take that pressure data over time, maybe it's um, 1,000 pressure readings in one second. And we compare that to what we expect. And if they match up, everything's good. If there's a mismatch, we need to contact you and say, looks like your pump is spiking or whatever the automated error message would be. But we're trying to, uh, there's a lot of data embedded in um, just on-off on -off data. And you can see there's some slight fluctuations here in this pressure, and it tells us things. And we can analyze those little bits of information and find out, okay, this is how long it takes the valve to fill. Okay, so um, the summary of that is what we're trying to do is, is derive ways to feed back into auto water and modify the auto water settings themselves to produce a better result. And specifically, we would be uh, mod modifying the duration and the drainage based on the soil response. I'm gonna show you just a little um, tool that I built to analyze that. Todd, can I share out my screen here? Sure. Okay. I'll stop sharing. All right. Okay, here we go. That's what I'm going to share. All right, what do you all see there? I just lost my mouse. <laughs> I don't see your mouse. Mate, where did it go hiding on you? Out of my screen is completely gone. There we go. We're seeing screen sharing. Okay, something. here we go. So this is um, 
a web page that I use to analyze uh, percolation. And if you watch over here on, on the edge here, you see these blue boxes on the left edge. These blue boxes are, are uh, colored according to their absolute water amount, whereas the lines on the chart are being presented in a relative manner. I want you to watch these blue boxes as this chart goes across this irrigation demarked by this green zone. And you just keep your eye on those blue boxes. You can see the transit of water through the profile. And you can see there's a whole lot of water moving right now, but it's not dropping clear down. It's just deeply irrigating the first four levels, but the water is all staying there. And you can actually see that when you look at the absolute values of moisture. So this is just one tool that, that, that I use to try and figure out how do we take this information and feed it back into the auto water algorithm to improve uh, that delivery system even more. Uh, so really that's the goal of um, my current work is, is to improve the algorithm and uh, taking other data sources. We have so many data sources that we're considering feeding back in, but of course, as you might expect, uh, moisture monitoring. Todd, you can go ahead and take the screen back or I'll stop sharing it. Yeah, I just stopped sharing. I think that's, I think we're just about wrapped here with 40 minutes. And uh, so really the future is about just trying to improve this thing. You, you haven't heard us say ET. That's really kind of what I wanted to end on. Um, for, for, for decades, really, I calculated ET for people. I calculated ET reference, ET theta, ET crop. I calculated maturity level, accumulated growth degree days, all these things, you know, soil water holding capacity, all to try and model something that we had right in front of us all the time, which is the soil moisture. So instead of trying to create an irrigation model based on things that just get you more and more abstract from the actual soil moisture content, we decided to focus on just that. And when we did that, what we found is all those variables, soil type, crop, they all just flatten out and go away because every plant has one thing in common. They all like low water stress. So that may be rice, excuse me, <laughs> cactus. All right, cactus and rice. But uh, other than that, I think uh, auto water was an intent to create a crop independent, weather independent, soil independent management system. And with that, I think I've got my work cut out for me for the rest of my life. <laughs> well said, Jeff. Thanks both of you. I, um... I continue just to be impressed with the work that you guys are doing. Um, and, you know, it's worth noting you guys have uh, on the Agronet side over a thousand, I believe, sensors deployed out on, on farms. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, uh, and you've been doing that for 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, so a lot of, a lot of smarts uh, between the two of them. And it, it's great to see all that coming together. And, and that leaves, as I close on a couple of things here, uh, we partnered for as Innovate Ag uh, with uh, a number of different folks, including the Tree Fruit Research Commission and Washington State University, to build out this Smart Orchard pilot this this last summer. And uh, Agronet has a, a number of different sensors out there. Basically, the intent was to really pull together um, many different sensor providers and sensor types. And again, break down data silos so that a grower could have new insights. And that was where it was great to work with um, Jenny and some of her counterparts at, at WSU um, on the soil science side of things, on water management, um, to, to better understand um, how this data could be used together. So you see everyone from Meter Group to Phytech, Aquaspy, uh, Davis Instruments, um, Soil moisture, sorry, a soil nutrient company called Paralytic. Um, 
And so over the coming uh, weeks, we'll actually be sharing from these each of these different providers a little bit more of their perspective on what their sensors do. And then we'll work to, to show how we can tie more together than just what that one particular platform has. And that's what ultimately we believe growers are looking for and we're hearing is to bring together a consolidated view so that you've got more than say just soil moisture and weather and um, uh, and auto water capabilities as an example, but perhaps you're tying it in the crop yield um, projections and, and views. So quick summary of our capabilities today. Again, this is a photo of, uh, of the 20 acre block where we have the smart orchard. And it's again about pulling together the, all the data from different sources, particularly on the imagery pieces, which is where we complement each other on, on the uh, Tectronics Agronet folk. Um, and the focus is on AI-driven predictive offerings. Um, in the coming weeks, we'll uh, bring in capability with uh, Green Atlas and give you a demo on how you can use an ATV traveling up and down orchard blocks about 20 miles an hour uh, to come up with a, a view of what your crop density uh, as well as what your tree mapping looks like across all of your blocks basically it looks like Google Maps with Street View. Um, and you can do that at bloom count to applet all the way through uh, full size apples and then can use that for labor planning, chemical planning, even water planning and so on. Um, we'll talk in the future about a dashboard that we've built out for irrigation planning purposes for people that aren't quite ready to jump all the way over the deep end with auto water. Um, and then the premium capabilities is really around insights with automation. And that's a good example. Auto water is an example of that, or also feeding data into say smart sprayers, uh, where we'll also have smart guided systems to talk about their smart apply system in the coming weeks as well. So you can see down here in the corner, basically all these different data sets and, and the intent is to bring those all together so that the grower has that nice consolidated view uh, in the app, and we're using the Agronet app to do quite a bit of that. Um, so that's more or less it. Again, it's Steve Mantle here. Thank you very much to Lance for coming out and, uh, and talking tonight, and Todd and Jeff. There's our contact info. Um, certainly also want to encourage you to go to our website at innovate.ag, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can look at our upcoming webinars. And so in a couple of weeks, We'll have another partner that works very closely with the Agronet crew, Centec, uh, come out and their CTO um, will talk about uh, water management with soil moisture, with their soil moisture probes. Definitely considered one of the gold standards out there um, on soil moisture uh, sensor providers and talk about kind of what's coming next down the road um, for innovations. We'll hear from others like Davis Instruments, AquaSpy, uh, Meter Group, um, smart guided systems will talk about their LIDAR driven um, smart sprayer um, and Green Atlas will talk about um, some of that imagery analysis that we'll talk about uh, that I just mentioned as well. So that's a wrap. Really appreciate you taking time this evening. Feel free to follow up with us by uh, email if you have any questions or anything that we can answer for you. Um, we're really working toward uh, on the Agronet side of things, um, Jeff and Todd are looking for a handful of new growers going into next season. So now is the time to reach out to us or uh, the Agronet team if you're interested in trying out uh, auto water for the next growing season. Uh, reach out and we'll schedule some time to plan things out and, uh, and get things going. Appreciate your time, everybody. Have a fantastic night. Thank you again um, to, to our panel.